Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, once again, we are back together. Uh, now we're looking at question two uh, from the November 2021 paper, um, you know, the DBE paper that was written recently. And as I said, you know, the purpose of these videos is really not to stress you out at all. OK, uh, and the only thing that we're trying to do is just analyze and see if, uh, you know, there are some areas and how we answered it, first of all. But secondly, to see if, uh, you know, uh, you know, we've really understood. So we are just consolidating now. OK, uh, so uh, please enjoy. Uh, just watch this with the purpose of just uh, trying to enjoy and seeing how your responses were. Right. So let's look at question two. It says uh, we've got a 20 kg block which is placed on a rough surface inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. All right. They say a constant force F acts uh, acting parallel to the surface is applied. So there's uh, force F there. Uh, which is applied on the block so that the block moves up an incline at a constant velocity. I'm sure that, uh, you know, of course, your, your ears are buzzing already, you know, thinking, yeah, I know what that means. So then it's moving at a constant velocity of two meters per second. OK, they say refer to the diagram below. Right now, um, they say constant kinetic frictional force of 80 newtons acts on the block. Right. Now, the first thing that they ask us uh, is to state Newton's first law in words. Remember, Newton's first law simply states a body will remain at rest or in constant motion in a straight line unless it is acted upon by an unbalanced set of forces or unless it's acted upon by a resultant force. Now, let's go into question 2.2. OK. Um, so let's get that there. They say draw a labeled free body diagram uh, for the block. Now let's talk about the forces that are acting on this. And by the way, notice it's four marks. So it means that we are expecting four forces there, right? So um, the first very obvious one would be the applied force. So I'm going to say, well, we know we've got force applied there. Uh, we know it's going up the incline. Uh, we know we have got a normal force. And I'm going to draw it there. Please make it a point that this is at 90 degrees uh, to uh, the incline to your applied force. OK, so we know this is going to be our normal force. OK, so that's the normal force there. Um, and then, or you can say F normal. All right. Uh, in this case, we also have frictional force and we know friction opposes motion, right? They did say it moves up the incline. So it means that friction is actually moving down the incline. OK, so this would be F friction. OK, and obviously the last one would be the gravitational force. Of course, in this case, I can draw gravitational force is acting vertically downwards okay so force of gravity or you can say the weight okay alternatively um, uh, you know how we could actually draw that is that we could uh, instead okay so we'll have the normal force we'll have applied force there we'll have frictional force but what we could do is we could draw the components of friction, which is the, no, uh, the FG parallel, uh, perpendicular and the parallel component. So remember that FG perpendicular. So, OK, uh, please, I'm not going to write these out in full. I uh, hope you understand that. Of course, I've already given them their full names there. And please remember when they say labeled free body diagram, it means you ought to write these either in full or if you've written, um, you know, acronyms, then you need to qualify what those acronyms actually stand for. So, for instance, if you write N there, what does N stand for? Uh, it stands for normal force, right? Um, and then we've got frictional force. OK, so I'm just going to say FK there, kinetic friction. And then instead of having, uh, remember I said instead of having gravitational force, now we're going to have the, sorry, this was supposed to be FG perpendicular. Sorry about that. And this one would now be FG parallel. 
Now, I can already imagine some of you asking, how do you know which one is longer than which? I don't, okay? So I just draw, uh, um, you know, uh, you're not going to be penalized for, you know, uh, the, the size of your forces, okay? But what you must always keep in mind is that you must draw arrows. If you don't show the arrows, in that case, it would mean that your free body diagram is actually incorrect, okay? Right, now let's move on to the next question. Uh, and by the way, these are taken as one, okay, because basically they are replacing this one force here. All right, let's go on to uh, 2.3 now. Okay, they say calculate, uh, calculate the magnitude of force F. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take, uh, um, you know, all the forces that are parallel to the incline. Okay, so I'm going to say, well, we know that F net is equal to ma but remember the moment they said to us it's at constant velocity or moving at constant velocity then it means that our acceleration is zero okay so what this means uh, is that now what are the forces that are acting parallel okay it's going to be so we're taking the sum of forces in the parallel direction okay so it's going to be i'm going to take upwards as positive um, so it's force applied okay there it is going up minus the frictional force minus the parallel uh, component of gravity and all of these are equal to zero so my force applied um, remember that's force f that's the one i'm looking for they told me that the frictional force is 18 newtons but remember how do we calculate gravi uh, fg parallel we always say mass times gravitational force, uh, acceleration rather, multiplied by the sine of the angle, okay, of elevation. So this is going to be mg, the sine of theta. If you don't know what we're talking about, it means you haven't watched our Newton's Laws videos. Of course, uh, you can go and uh, look at those. And this is even for those who are going to watch this video in future. Okay, so this we're going to say the mass is 20 times 9.8 multiplied by the sine the angle of elevation is 30 degrees and of course uh, we can work this out okay okay taking everything here we get an, a final answer of f of course we're going to take it to the other side uh, i get f is equal to 116 uh, newtons okay that would be our final answer for F. All right, now they say uh, in the next portion, assume that the kinetic energy um, or the kinetic friction rather uh, acting on the block remains 18 newtons as it moves from point X to Y. Okay, they say write down the net force acting on the block as it moves from x to y oh sorry i actually moved, uh, missed a portion there they say force f is removed rather when uh, when the block reaches point x on the surface right so they remove uh, force f all right they say the blocks continue to move up uh, the constant uh, i mean up the surface and comes to rest momentarily at y Obviously, in this case, if you are pulling something, it already has a momentum going up, right? So even if you remove that force, it's still going to continue, but it's going to now begin to slow down going up. And then obviously, at some point, it's going to stop and then start sliding back down. Okay. Uh, so they say, assume that the kinetic frictional force acting on the block remains 18 newtons as it moves from point X to Y. Okay. Uh, they say write down the net force um, acting on the block as it moves from X to Y. So remember now, uh, you now, as it moves up, it no longer has force F. It would simply mean that it's only the frictional force and still uh, FG parallel moving downwards uh, that, are mo uh, that are acting on the ball. Okay. Uh, I mean, on the... On the uh, on the block so in this case uh, it would mean the two forces fg parallel going down uh, um, you know uh, uh, frictional force also going down so it means our f net this time now please i want you to note would be 
negative 116 because now you no longer have force F that's pulling it upwards. Um, it only has those two forces, which is 18 and that uh, value that we calculated there. I think that would be minus 98. Okay, uh, so you have minus. Now remember, uh, that's why it's slowing down because that force has now become negative. Okay, or you can say it's 116 uh, newtons down the incline this time around. Okay, right. And then let's look at the very last question. Okay. Uh, they say to us, calculate the distance between points X and Y. So we want the distance there, okay, uh, when this guy is actually moving up the incline. Now, I want you to keep in mind, it was moving at 2 meters per second, okay. Now it stops, all right, um, in this case. So we want to know um uh you know that that distance there so i would use equations of motion here and say well my initial velocity okay so let's look at initial velocity so our initial velocity would be two meters per second okay uh our final velocity they did say it stops at y okay um so how would we get the acceleration we can find the acceleration because we've got the net force as as well as the you know as as well as the um, you know the mass so i can say that f net okay is equal to ma okay so that's minus 116 which is equal to now please keep in mind that that net force should be negative so that the acceleration is negative because it's telling us that it's slowing down so that's minus 116 uh, is equal to 20a okay um, so if I divide 116 by 20 um, we get a value of one uh, 5.8 okay so that's our acceleration is minus 5.8 meters per second okay right so that's our acceleration value so we've got uh, initial velocity final velocity and the acceleration uh, in this case, we can uh, obviously use, um, you know, uh, um, um, yeah, equations of motion. In fact, I'm thinking of uh, the second equation, which says Vf squared is equals to Vi squared plus 2 times A uh, delta x. Okay, so now I've got my final velocity, which is 0 squared, my initial velocity, which was 2, positive 2 squared, um, plus two times now please remember this is negative i don't know why i wrote five uh, meters per second there uh, it should be minus 5.8 meters per second squared uh, sorry about that minus 5.8 meters per second squared please remember that acceleration is measured in meters per second squared okay right so that's minus 5.8 and we're looking for the change in displacement okay right and then uh, obviously we're going to take everything to the other side 2 squared is 4 okay and of course 2 times min uh, minus 5.8 uh, that would be I think 11.6 okay so we're going to say minus 4 uh, divided by that negative 11.6 okay please you can verify this with me uh, I get a displacement of uh, 0 0.34 meters okay of course you could have done this another way um, what you could have done is use the work energy theorem okay uh, by simply saying that the network done is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Okay, so our network done in this case would have been F net uh, delta X. Okay, remember the cos of theta. And this would be, you know, EK final minus EK initial. Okay, so um, I don't have a lot of space there. Um, so remember our kinetic energy 
in this case uh, rather sorry a net force was uh, 116 so remember when I use work uh, I just substitute the force uh, the magnitude of the force multiplied by delta x now remember the force is going down the incline and uh, um, you know the 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 box or the block is actually going up so it means this would be the cos of 180 why because the 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 force is actually opposing right uh, remember when we do that we say direction uh, angle between the direction of motion and the force in question and in this case it would make an angle of 180 and of course you can work out your kinetic energy final uh, which is zero okay and your kinetic energy initial remember your velocity was two so this would be a minus a half uh, of 20 multiplied by two squared okay yeah because I'm running out of space there um, yeah you can uh, basically just uh, continue with this I'm sure you'll find the very same answer all right um, yeah and I hope that has been quite helpful uh, you would have actually obviously I know you did you scored yourself 16 marks there okay so I'll see you guys again next time. Please don't forget to tell your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your uncles, your gogos, uh, everyone about this channel. Uh, rave about it, you know. Uh, tell them how much you've been able to learn this year. And for those of you who are still going into metric next year, welcome. And please don't forget to subscribe so that we keep those numbers going. And I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.